Hi everyone, I'm Joanne Fink for Sikora, and today I want to share two of my passions with you, lettering and patterning. When I first started doing Zenspirations patterns a couple years ago, naturally as a lifelong lettering artist, the first thing I did was put them into letters, just like these. And today I'm going to show you how you can take patterns and put them on the edges of your letters to make your lettering more interesting and unique. It's easy, it's fun, and I will take you step by step through the process of how to do it. So let's get started. Every time I do a letter, it turns out differently. We're going to look both at some black and white letters, and then we're also going to take a look at how to color them. Start by picking up my favorite tool, which is a micron. Always work on good quality paper. It makes a huge difference. I'm working on Strathmore 400 series drawing paper. And we're going to start by doing the outline of the letter. Then you want to draw the rounded part. I think I'm going to do an R for you so you can see how to do a diagonal stroke. If your pen ever skips the way mine did just there, no worries, just go back and ink it in. You'll notice that when I'm drawing the R, I did not try to connect these. It's much easier for me to try and get my patterning spaces by adding second lines. Adding a little bit of rounded elements to your letter is a nice touch. You can always add a little circle in between and then continue it up from there. But basically, I don't mind crossing lines and adding extra lines because, again, it just gives me more spaces to put pattern. And I feel like I need one more line here. I think I'll just add a little bit more and I'll do the same thing. I'll cross over the line and bring it back in. And this gives me lots of opportunities to add the patterns. We're going to add one more line and now I feel there's no place to pattern right there. So I've got to have an extra little bit of space in here. So now I think I'm really ready to start my patterning. I usually look for a long continuous area that I can put pattern in, and that's the one that I'll put my triangle pattern in because it's the most versatile and it helps me ground the whole piece. But I can add the vertical strokes that add weight to that part of the letter. Running around the edge, I'm going to put a loop pattern. In the skinnier spaces, I like to use the fan pattern, and since this space is pretty tiny, we'll put our fan pattern here. For the bottom, I like to come back and add some weight. I will often put a pretty substantial pattern at the bottom. Here, I'm going to do horizontal stripes to accent this edge. Now this one needs some patterns, so I think I'll do my four lines in a circle. This is a good pattern to put in small areas also. Circles by themselves can look really cool, especially if you put them into a space that swells and then tapers. I think we'll do more fan pattern over here. When you're doing around a curve, try and keep the lines moving around the curve with you. I don't like to put the same pattern next to each other, but since I've used the triangle pattern over there, I think I can use it again safely over here. I still am going to have the echo triangle, I call it, but I think on the other side of the echo triangle, I'm going to put a heart because the world can always use another heart. Up here, I feel like I just want lines, almost like a candy cane. 
Now it's a time to step back and look at the letter and say, what else does it need? Well, one thing it needs in my mind is some weight. It's nice to add color into a piece that already has some pattern. So I'm going to get my favorite metallic and glitter pens, which is what I like to use to embellish the letters. And I look for areas, just really tiny areas. You know, I don't want to overwhelm the piece, but you'll see that just a little bit of color makes a huge difference. And I never want to put the same color next to what I've just done. If I want it to make that stroke look like it continues, I'll use the same color. But if I don't, then I'll switch again. So here I have blue metallic, blue glitter, and green glitter all in the same basic stroke. And what I'm going to do is go around the perimeter and just add this kind of as an accent. And you really just want touches. It doesn't need to be a lot. Like I might just put the glitter into those two dots and not any place else. But I think here, is crying out for a little bit. And I don't think I've used the green metallic at all. I had deliberately left a little bit of space on the edge of the pattern, and I added a little bit of space here, knowing that I would want to come back and put some color. Something else that you can do that is very cool, you can blend with these things. So I'm seamlessly changing from the blue glitter to the green glitter and back. And you can do the same thing with the metallic. And it adds such a cool effect. OK, so where else do I need a little bit of color? So I will put blue right in here. I'm looking for an overall balance of color. And I feel I probably need something up here. And even though I don't have a space defined there, I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to close the space afterwards. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. And so as soon as this dries, I will just add the finishing touches to the lines. But right now, I am going to just go over and add a little bit of Micron on the outside here. And now we can cover this. And now that that's dry. And voila, here is our finished letter R. I hope you will do your own letter. You can download examples either from the Zenspirations website, www.zenspirations.com, or from Sakura's website, www.sakuraofamerica.com. And I will say, happy patterning. Thanks for watching.